Alright, so welcome to Jordan's Gaming Network, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the relatively the GTX uh, 1080, 1070, 1060, uh, a little bit about the RX 480. Uh, there is rumor that there will be the TI version of the 1080 coming out. Uh, nowhere this month. Maybe sometime next year, because remember these cards, uh, they just have recently gotten released now. The 1060, as you can see right here, specifications have leaked. So right now, um, <clears throat> there's no real world uh, benchmark. And as far as specs, they do claim that it's a lot faster than the RX 480. Um... But if, if I were you, like, at least if it's me, uh, say I have the budget to afford any one of these cards, uh, considering that the RX 480 is to be about $200, um, $200 but this is really just for the 4 gigabyte version. Now, if this was the 8 gigabyte version, uh, we're talking $240, $50 now, uh, ish. Now, the thing about that is that that's strictly just reference card. Uh, now, if we're talking uh, any third party as far as MSI, Gigabyte, Asus. Now, these are all great vendors, especially for any cards that uh, come out referenced by NVIDIA or um, AMD. On the contrary, you have to take note that these are cards that are as they're coming out uh, you also have to consider will you be able to run these cards uh, do you do you have a power supply that can supply enough power uh, in terms of power efficiency uh, an example is I run an APU and I think it it's rated for a 15 watts uh, that is in power consumption I think it's a bit more than that uh, but it certainly isn't something as 150 watts. As you can see here, the Radeon RX 480 is 150 watts. Now, this, I do not know for sure if it's strictly for the 4 gigabyte edition or the 8 gigabyte edition because they do not specify that. Um they just claim it as it's generic spec with four and eight so the way I I interpret this is that for 150 watts you have the four and eight gigabyte GDDR5 so I guess both um, so what does this mean this means that there really is no point in my opinion um, at this moment to consider spending money on the RX 480 unless you plan on just testing and running benchmarks because at this moment we still have to wait till July 7th for the GTX 1060 to come out once that comes out other than the specs that are currently available you get to see the real world performance under uh, certain titles like Battlefield 4, Black Ops 3, uh, League of Legends, uh, Tomb Raider, uh, you know, is the whole nine yards, but do you have $200 to spend or do you have $300 to spend? See, now, when you have $200, $250 to spend right there, you really could just go for the RX 480. Uh, but what would happen if the 1060 had, uh, as they claim, is faster? You know, what if it was faster? Um, as far as leaking... NVIDIA has claimed for it to be 15% faster, but that's only on a couple things, uh, mostly related to VR. Uh, right, so here we have power efficiency, VR performance, you know, the performance, but 
this is this is like it's it's a great thing it's just we don't know for sure until we actually get the cards uh so all i really wanted to say here was this is just a reference card uh if these guys are bringing out the 1060 and it would cost about the same if not less than the rx 480 then you could just imagine what msi asus gigabyte and whatnot what these guys are are bringing to the table uh currently at the moment there is a card by iChill uh, which is I believe is the 1080 or 1070 and it does not draw as much power from the PCI because it really just uses two six pins right on the card um, and some of these cards the RX 480s is having that situation uh, that's not really nothing going on with the uh, N with NVIDIA cards at the moment as far as the GTX 1070 and 1080 so it, it, in my in my opinion if I were to have $300 on me I would actually wait before purchasing an RX 480 and wait to see the benchmarks for the 1060 because maybe if it is faster than the RX 480 I would just go right ahead and purchase that and still have a couple extra dollars on me or I can just go ahead and get the 1080 or the 1070 um, but then again we still don't have any information on how long till the 1080 Ti is to be released because you see right now at this moment with NVIDIA releasing the 1060, now AMD would have to respond with another card, possibly one being faster than that and costing less again, or releasing another card as faster than the 1060, 1070, almost as fast as the 1080, and costing like maybe 100 to probably about $400, $100, $200 more there, so right now at the moment we don't even know so we we you know just looking at this page it's pretty crazy um because a lot of these guys here on youtube a lot of these guys on forums they keep stating that the rx 480 is at 200 majority of the benchmarks are actually being crossfired. Not a lot of videos out there are talking about the RX 480 as a single card. Uh, nobody is really touching the four gigabyte and running any benchmarks on it at the moment. People are just going for the eight gigabyte edition and going with a uh, crossfire and running bench benchmarks that way. Um, Yes, it's true that two RX 480s can, in fact, beat a single GTX 1080 uh, in gaming performance. But then again, you can just have two GTX 1080s in an SLI configuration. And this is with me making the assumption that there is already support for the SLI configuration under the GTX 1080. Um, I haven't looked that up, but I know that based on some YouTube videos that have been around popular or whatnot, they've already confirmed that. And if they don't have any videos, if you were to go out there and watch some videos and they don't really have that information, uh, you can check forums and whatnot. But if you really did have that money to spend, I don't see any, uh, problem with that I mean the things that you get out of here is price to performance all right because no one here is trying to buy a GTX 980 Ti or a Titan X or anything like that it makes no sense to go and buy yourself a 700 800 dollar card when you have a 200 300 400 dollar uh, card that 
can run just as good in performance and has a long-term support in terms of warranty by the manufacturers of AMD and NVIDIA being reference cards and also third-party vendors such as MSI, Gigabyte, ASUS, and whatnot. In my case, I have an APU. I have an A107850K. Um, with majority of the games that I play, I can do uh, 1080p gaming with mid to high settings. Now, surprisingly, I've upgraded to a TV that can display uh, 1440p. No 4K, just 1440p, and with that, I can basically increase the resolution within the settings of each game that I choose. If I do that, and I have the performance set very high, uh, nearly to ultra settings, it looks very rubbish. It doesn't. Li it does not look good at all. And this is running with HDMI. Uh, but this is only a problem that I'm facing with the APU at the moment. Uh, so if you are trying to make a budget build, the route that I, I had chosen was the APU route and eventually smacking the graphics card on there. Perhaps I'll put in an RX 480 um, regardless of the fact that it's consuming 150 watts. Or maybe I'll go ahead and I'll take the GTX 1060. Uh, once it's released and happens to be faster than the RX 480. Uh, maybe I'll go for the 1070 just for the simple fact that it's around $300. Instead of going with the 1080 because that one's mm, costs a little bit more. Um, and uh, all I would do is just take that card, put it in there, and I'll be good. Uh, disable the integrated graphics in the APU. And... Perhaps a little bit further on the future upgrade uh, the processor so they could just have his dedicated processor dedicated graphics now That's just with my build I would recommend um, And I will not claim this as an opinion even though it would seem as an opinion I would recommend that if you're on a strict budget that you would start out with an ITX motherboard um, 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM but if you're going the APU route make sure that you have really high speed in terms of how many megahertz you have like do not go for 1300 megahertz in speed just 1600 uh, 1866 uh, 2100, 2400, uh, basically like that. It'll cost a little bit more. I'm expecting somewhere around $80 or so. Yeah, 60, 70, 80 uh, for the RAM sticks. Do you want to have it 8 to 16 gigs? Uh, 8 just for gaming, 16 if you're going to be multitasking, so if you're going to be doing some streaming and playing the game at the same time and you're gonna do I don't know you're gonna listen to some music in the background a couple videos in the background multitasking then you're gonna do that uh, also with the complementary of the processor you can get away with a two core or dual core processor but in this day and age you want to go with a four gigahertz so you want a quad core processor you want to make sure that it's overclockable just like the RAM it should be overclockable if you cannot afford a 2400 megahertz uh, by a 1600 megahertz so that you can overclock to 2400 megahertz uh, or, or somewhere somewhere in between because you can already see that I have uh, Mushkin Eco 2 16 gigabytes I got 2 8 gigabytes so I got them at, six, uh, at 1866 megahertz overclocked uh, specifically, I am not sure if these RAM sticks can be overclocked past that because they are not at the stock voltage being 1.5 uh, 
uh, they are at 1.3 so maybe it's that or my motherboard cannot uh, or just will not allow it to exceed um, 1866 megahertz I haven't really looked into that but it's okay for what I'm doing sure if I were to have an extra amount of you know budget wise like a little bit more money I would not have gone with 1600 megahertz I would have gone with 2133 you know 2100 megahertz maybe uh, 1866 megahertz above so that it could be overclocked more so that I could take advantage of it utilizing it with the APU processor because the APU processor is highly dependent of the RAM speed um, not the capacity so there's that when you're looking at these cards right here don't have you don't have to worry about that I don't have to worry about that I know that if I were to just uh, buy any graphic cards that I would take a look at right here uh, being the 1060 70 or 80 or the RX 480 or even the 700 series which was really the R9 270s and the uh, 290s and whatnot I don't have to worry about how fast is the speed of my RAM um, capacity is just all I need in the card all I need for the RAM that's just me but getting off topic getting back on topic that's really what I recommend and you're gonna you're gonna want to have that 1600 megahertz or more uh, you're gonna want to have like I said 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM you're gonna also want to have your quad-core processor if not more uh, your ITX motherboard because it's it's gonna be budget so this board will fit in any case um, if you want it to be a case that you can uh, take to a LAN party something really small kinda like console size uh, I would recommend something that is not a Sente case that's for sure I have one but just don't get that uh, maybe something from Cooler Master or Thermaltech or anything in terms of that size but in reality any case will do just fine um, when you're purchasing these cases make sure they have high ratings uh, look for the features that you would want that you would need maybe you want a lot of hard drive trays and less optical drive trays um, make sure that there is a lot of space in these cases at least just enough for airflow otherwise you're gonna to have to resort to liquid cooling and um, in my book I think that's just about it when it comes to what you are going to need but in terms of these cards once you have these budget builds um, at this moment it makes sense to go with the RX 480 but like I really really I cannot stress this I would really prefer that you guys would wait to see what they say about the GTX 1060 because at this moment looking at these specs um, not too shabby they're not, they're not bad it just kind of sucks if you spent 250 bucks already on an 8 gigabyte of for an RX 480. If not, if you just spent money on two cards. And here's the rumor where uh, 1060 is less than or equal to in price, yet far greater in performance. Then that's a problem. Uh, not just you as the consumer, but also the shareholders, you know, AMD is in big trouble there. And it would really have to respond. And the whole point about this is competition. And the idea here traditionally is these cards are at that $200 ratio now. 
what would happen to the old cards like just before these cards were released i was thinking about getting the r9 270 or the r9 290 but not the uh, rebrands that were the r9 3 uh, 380 390 uh I didn't really see any point in that besides eye candy. It looked really nice. So looking into the prices, they didn't change much. I could not find an R9 270 that was about $100 flat, $150. Could not. It was almost about $200. Why go with the R9 270? Uh, when you can go with the RX 480 or you can go with the GTX 1060. Or if the GTX 1060 ends up being that it's a hoax and is really not as fast as the RX 480. Why not go with an RX 480 or go with a GTX 1070. So really you could just save up $100 or $200 more and you can get these great cards. Um... It'll be able to play all your games 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second. But a lot of these guys are not taking into consideration that the MSRP, something that should be sold at 200 flat rate, is not being sold at 200. Right down here, uh, $200 for the 4 gigabyte edition and $239 for the 8 gigabyte edition. Uh, in reality, it's two hundred dollars and then two hundred and forty dollars, not one ninety nine. But because of MSRP, they're going to end up having to uh, sell it a little bit higher. And I'm pretty sure if you go to eBay right now, uh, the GTX 1080 and uh, GTX 1070 should be a little bit higher. I'm talking about the thousands. And that's really because supply is low at the moment, but the demand is really high. And that's what I mean when I say MSRP. So, in other words, all I really wanted to talk about here today was just keep a lookout. You know, keep your eyes open, your ears open as well. And in the next couple of days... To July, July 7th, this whole week, there's going to be information uh, coming to us more about these cards. Specifically because every single, every single day that has been passing by, more information, m more information on the GTX 1060 than we had on the, the RX 480 in the last three weeks. So, I'm not sure who are going to be the first third-party vendors to make these cards uh, any, any better than the reference cards. Because the idea here is to be uh, power efficient. Uh, AMD is not doing anything at the moment to... To compete with the with Nvidia, uh, I mean they're not trying to uh, bring out the RX 480 and uh, claim it as something faster than the GTX 1080 or about the same speed. Uh, that's not their intention. They're just trying to release a card that can do the 1080p gaming and at a significant low price. So, that's the idea here. But the question that I have is, what are they going to release that will be able to beat the 1080? I still don't know because nobody knows. Matter of fact, if they were to try to release something that would beat the 1080, the GTX 1080 Ti would have to be released. And... This is just getting crazy. It's just getting crazy. But I don't know. Maybe sometime by the end of the week I'll have some more information. And um, I'll give you guys some more information on 
the GTX 1060, what are their benchmarks? Um, if I end up making these a, a bit too late, you can always check out some other videos on YouTube. Uh, some other people are able to purchase these cards and run the benchmarks themselves. Um, they do the the reviews themselves. They they go online and they check out all the information for themselves and you can make up your own opinion from that point on. Don't ever buy a card because you go online and you take a look at the specifications and determine that because you know what you know what you see right there that these are legit and that these are the type of specs that you're going to need in gaming. That's okay. But you need to know what it really is, what it really is outputting when you're actually playing a game. You want to know that you have that steady frame rate, that you that you are squeezing the most out of the you know your bang for your buck. You you spend two hundred dollars, you want to get the most out of that. You're squeezing that performance. You're trying to get everything you can out of it. Um. But why would you go and spend $200 on a card that's going to output 40 FPS on just about every game that you've tested so far when you can go and you spend the same amount on a brand new card that can output 60 FPS and in some games have a slight drop in frame rate towards the 50s. So right now, these guys are claiming at AMD that with the current drivers the RX 480 is doing great um, there's still more headroom as they claim for them as they continue making uh, uh, the driver updates better performance just in the RX 480 um, when they did the benchmarks it was in crossfire that was kinda sad because a lot of the people there and people like me watching on Twitch live were expecting it to just be a single card in performance. But of course it was too good to be true. How is it that this, these guys are going to sell us a $200 card that's literally outperforming the 1080 being one card, the RX 480? It's just not going to happen that way. It's going to be two cards. So... Now you know that you're going to have to basically spend $400 on the Crossfire configuration just to beat a single 1080, a GTX 1080. Um, now what would happen if you took two GTX 1080s and you put them in SLI configuration? It's ridiculous. So, so thanks for watching guys and um, see you next time.